So what I've drawn up here is a little diagram of the yield stresses in this piece of steel barrel that could happen when it's fired. Um, this stress here is the hoop stress and the op stress in the opposite direction is the axial stress in the barrel due to the pressures. We're, get, we're focusing on the hoop stress. Uh, hoop stress is, the, is easily calculated and it just uses the pressure in the vessel, the radius of the interior diameter of the vessel and the wall thickness. So I did some checks, I, I used my pin gauge and we came up with a diameter of 0 0.297 for this 30-06. Um, which gave us a uh, radius of uh, 0 0.149 inches. I went back to the good part of the barrel, for want of a better word, prior to it being machined, and the diameter at that point, even though we know this had a taper, so it would have slightly uh, reduced in diameter a little bit more, was just over 5 eighths of an inch, 0 0.65. Um, the barrel pressure in a 30 out 6 is around 60,000 psi. So we have basically everything we need to know to work out the hoop stress in this pressure vessel. So in the good barrel section, I needed to know what is the wall thickness. So it was simply a case of taking the outside diameter, subtract the inside diameter, divide by 2, that gave us that wall thickness. Then the bad, because of the way I had to get this off, we had to turn down and because it was eccentric to everything, it actually thinned down the wall in this area. I measured it with a vernier, I wasn't going to try and be down to the uh, you know, nanometer here, um, and I came up with a uh, outside diameter of 0.453. So the wall thickness in the bad barrel section, for want of a better word, is 0 0.078 inches. So now we have everything we need to calculate what is the hoop stress in this barrel when it's fired and it's full of gases at 60,000 psi. And using our formula of PR on T, pressure times radius divided by wall thickness gave us 50,508.5 psi. In the bad barrel section, we had 114.615 psi. That is the stress the steel is under. So, looking up the base properties of 4104 chrome moly, it has a tensile strength of 90,000 psi and a yield stress, which has a safety factor applied to it, of 60,000 psi. So, when fired, even accounting for some tapering down here, we were in the range of 50,508,000 psi, which is probably uh, 0 0.85, okay, that's 84% percent of, uh, of the yield stress. So we're good. This one is this is 91. This is nearly two times the yield stress. So there is no doubt in my mind that the first time this gun would have been fired, we would have had a problem. Um, I know that we hadn't machined it down like this, so we hadn't got the yield, but it had been threaded. It was a poor job. Things were out of alignment. Something could have jammed up, and this barrel would have failed. Trying to correct it, we, would have, we machined off this lousy uh, muzzle brake, and you can see from that an earlier shot that the, it's just so out of whack. It's unbelievable. And the barrel's like a bend in a doodle here, good old banana, that if we had machined it, tried to correct it, even put on a new muzzle brake, and then cleaned all that, 
the potential that the wall thickness of our barrel material would have been so compromised that on firing it would have failed in hoop stress. Now, axial stress in the barrel is not an issue because I'm not going to go through the math on it or how these are derived, but it has, the stress in the, in the axial direction is about half of the yield stress. So if you drive around and you see an old boiler around in someone's backyard, some old um, farmer may have had an old thing, and you see how the joint was an old roll plate riveted together, they put a lot of rivets in the longitudinal direction, so if it was riveted here, as opposed to joining the pieces together that way, because we have twice the amount of stress in the 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 uh, in the diameter diametrical area than the other direction. So, um, basic uh, strength of materials, which I'm saying basic because this is actually, you know, unless you did physics or um, an associate's degree in mechanical engineering stuff, you may not have covered in either. Um, a blacksmithing class or uh, trade school um, but it's, it's very important to know if you're going to be fixing someone's barrels and you think okay I'm just going to clean off this and uh, ignoring the fact that the bullets going to be whooping out at an angle anyway you're going to you're going to end up turning the inside bore uh, concentric to uh, eccentric to the outside diameter or vice versa. Um, the only way to correct this barrel is to chop her off here and then maybe thread this again and put a muzzle brake further back. The problem here is it's off of a Remington 724. Uh, the barrels for those range from 18 inches plus. Let's call it a standard 18 inch. This barrel, someone had chopped it down was 16 and a half. So including the muzzle brake we had 16 and a half inches to work with. Well the minute we took this muzzle brake off of it is no longer a long barrel rifle it is a short barrel rifle so to cut it back even more um, is really uh, heading into the realms of I don't want to deal with the ATF um, about that. Um, so I hope uh, this little uh, exercise kind of enlightens somebody um, out there and just just makes you think that um, these are this is a very simple simple formula to remember uh, based on whatever round you're using these barrel pressures are easy to come up with so you can really do some uh, math very simple math to come up and say um, I have got to maintain a number under this guy and um, you can see we were we had plenty of fat we had you know 16% of capacity still in the yield stress of the steel which is already has a safety factor applied to it but this guy it already it exceeded the the actual tensile ultimate tensile strength of the material so uh, it was going nowhere fast. Um, I hope everyone learned something and stay tuned for my next uh, little piece of uh, information that I may come up with. Thanks for watching and this is Peter McCormack signing out. Uh, leave your comments at the bottom.